Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Titanic Animations, where I attempt to recreate Titanic with CGI and tell her story. The topic for today is Titanic's lifeboats, and why were they launched half full? I see this question pop up in my comment section all the time, and at first glance, it can be answered pretty easily with a simple answer, one that can be understood by basically anyone, to prevent a panic. But most people not familiar with the disaster aren't sure how Titanic's lifeboats were loaded during the sinking, which also plays into the factor more than most others as to why the boats were launched half full in most cases. So using 3D technology and historical accounts, I'm going to show you what happened at the lifeboat stations to help you see why this problem happened. So let's start off with the basics. Titanic was equipped with 20 lifeboats on her maiden voyage. 14 of these were a normal wooden boat, measuring 30 feet long by just over 9 feet wide, and they had a depth of 4 feet. Each one of these normal lifeboats had a capacity for 65 people per boat. The next two of Titanic's lifeboats were cutter boats, or more commonly referred to as emergency boats. These were located on the forward end of the boat deck, on both port and starboard. They were always swung out at the ready from their davit stations while at sea. That way they could be readily deployed in case of an emergency, like a disaster at sea, or if someone had fallen overboard. They measured just over 25 feet long, 7 feet wide, and only 3 feet deep. Though normally only used for emergencies, they could allow for a capacity of 40 persons per boat. The final four of Titanic's lifeboats were reserve boats, which are more commonly referred to by Titanic enthusiasts as collapsible boats. These boats featured a cork bottom, making them extremely hard to sink, but the sides of them were made of canvas, which could be collapsed when the boats were stored next to the emergency lifeboat davit stations and the number one funnel. They measured 27 and a half feet long, 8 feet wide, and were also 3 feet deep. The capacity for these boats were 47 passengers per boat. These three lifeboat designs brought Titanic's total capacity for persons in a lifeboat to 1,178, meaning that in the event of a disaster, this number would be the amount of people that could fit in the boats at one time. The thought process for not carrying more boats is due to two factors. One, the Board of Trade didn't require more than 16 lifeboats for a ship of Titanic size. And two, Titanic was so well designed that she could withstand most if not any disaster that would occur on the Atlantic. This meant that the ship would be able to stay afloat in case of an emergency. All of the passengers would board the lifeboats and then they would wait for a rescue ship to arrive. Once the rescue vessel had loaded all of the survivors on board safely, the boats would then be returned to the Titanic to offload the rest of her passengers. With the benefit of hindsight, we can already see the flaws in this logic, but this was standard operating practice in 1912. Titanic was actually carrying four more lifeboats than the law required at the time, making her and her sister ship the RMS Olympic quite literally among the safest vessels afloat. We have now arrived at midday on Sunday, April 14, 1912. Normal operating procedures called for a lifeboat drill to be carried out at this time, but this drill was postponed for multiple reasons. Many passengers on board noted that the temperature had steadily been dropping from a pleasant and relatively mild morning to a bitter and biting cold during the afternoon. There was also a bit of wind prevalent that made Captain Smith delay the procedure. The ship was already a few hours behind schedule from an incident that happened during the Southampton departure, and so he made the decision to carry on with the journey. Later on that day, he would compensate for this by taking his ship further south than was typical for the time before turning and heading directly for New York City. The reason for going further south is that a few ice warnings have made their way to the bridge of the ship at this time 
and looking to avoid an accident, Smith took his ship further south than was necessary in order to avoid any problems from icebergs and field ice that would be floating down from the north. The postponement of the lifeboat drill would cause problems later for the crew during the disaster. As there was no practice run for an emergency, the crew had to rely on a muster list alone to tell them what lifeboat station they were to be reporting to. This was further complicated by stewards and other crew members who may have been stationed at a lifeboat, instead being held up by passengers inside asking what was going on and taking the stewards and crew members away from the place that they were supposed to be during the sinking. The Titanic struck her iceberg at about 11.40 p.m. that Sunday night and immediately began to sink. Captain Smith ordered for multiple damage reports to be carried out and it was eventually concluded nearly 40 minutes after the iceberg strike that the ship was indeed going to sink. Not partially, as explained earlier in the video, but a complete and total loss. When he was told that his ship only had one to two hours before it would be on the bottom of the Atlantic, Captain Smith immediately told the crew to begin loading passengers into the boats, which brings us here. It is now roughly 12.30 a.m. on the deck of the Titanic. She has been sinking for just shy of an hour. First Officer Murdoch was in charge of this lifeboat station here, which held lifeboat number seven. Mr. Murdoch is assisted here by crewmen to man the falls or the ropes that would lower the lifeboat. He had a small complement of crewmen in the boat that would help passengers into it and who would man the oars once it had been launched, and a small group on deck that would help passengers up to and into the boats. The passengers had been woken up in the middle of the night, most of them from their sleep. They had been told to dress warmly and to come up on deck with their life vests on. But in several survivor accounts, many of them said that they were never told that the ship was sinking. So in their minds, this may have been simply a drill that was taking place. All they knew was that they were outside, some of them in only their nightgowns and pajamas, and now they were being asked to board a small wooden boat in near pitch black darkness. That boat would then be lowered approximately 65 feet down into the below freezing temperature ocean, where presumably they were just going to sit and wait until the drill or whatever it was had been completed. The following events varied slightly from each lifeboat station, but generally they all followed this same operating procedure. The officer in charge will begin by asking for volunteers to join the lifeboat before it left. The officer in charge would specifically not order passengers to enter because he wanted to avoid a panic. The passengers that were brave enough to step forward were then helped into the boats by crew members where they would be seated and then the next passenger would join. Each lifeboat station only had a small crowd of passengers around it. Most of them had gotten tired and cold and so they retreated back inside the ship for warmth. So with a dwindling crowd, all the officer in charge could do was ask for volunteers to join the boat. Those that elected to not board would be waiting on board Titanic to find out what was going on, or possibly just avoid the situation entirely and wait until it was over, and then they could go back to bed. Once no more passengers were willing to board each boat, the officer in charge would then turn to the crew and issue the command, prepare to lower, which would initiate the next phase of the lifeboat launching procedure. The lifeboats will be let down by ropes, not mechanically, very slowly by crew on the boat deck. The rate of descent was around five feet per minute, meaning that it took around five to five and a half minutes to completely lower each boat. Once the boat was safely lowered all the way, the officer in charge would generally move to the next lifeboat station and start the procedure all over again. So why were the crew wanting to avoid a panic? Because it's much easier to communicate with people 
who were calm. You see this all the time in tense situations. One of the first things that people in charge tell you is, please, remain calm. When panic breaks out, it's very hard to regain control of the situation. In Titanic's case, if the passengers were told the ship was sinking, they would be swarming the boats. They wouldn't care if the crew and officers were asking them to calmly walk and enter the boats. They would push and shove their way into the boats. This would potentially put each boat in danger of being overloaded, which could cause the boat to break and send all of the passengers down into the ocean. Passengers could also fall while attempting to board each boat in a panic and potentially get injured before hitting the ocean. Both of these things did eventually happen on Titanic, but they occurred later on in the sinking once the panic had broke out and it became apparent that the ship was in fact sinking. There are a few instances of passengers being pushed or nearly falling overboard later on in the sinking, and more than one account of someone jumping from the deck into a boat and seriously injuring the passengers in those boats. One survivor, a woman, suffered broken ribs and had to suffer for hours in agony while waiting for a rescue ship to arrive because a man had jumped from the boat deck down into her boat. This is the type of thing that the crew wanted to avoid. All the crew on board could do while the lifeboat was loading and lowering was to remain calm and keep the passengers calm. You see instances of this please remain calm mentality all throughout the sinking. The most famous example is the ship's band, who bravely stood out in the freezing cold playing calm and uplifting music to put people's minds at ease during a difficult time. Had there been a panic from the start in the loading of Titanic's lifeboats, there may have potentially been more people saved, but it's also just as likely that many more people would have been killed or seriously injured by the mob attempting to join the boats before they left. So hopefully this video helped those of you out who don't watch my videos or know much about the disaster. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a like, and if you want to, consider subscribing for more videos in the future. If you think I missed something or you want to go into more detail than I did here, put it down in the comments section. Discussion always leads to interesting things when it comes to Titanic. I know I've sort of been missing in action lately due to a health reason, but I'm finally getting on top of it. There's still no answers as to why my eye is messed up and I can't hardly see out of it, but... Things are being ruled out, so that's at least something. Until next time, this is Titanic Animations. See you in the next one.